Hey everyone, Irit here with a new process video for HipKit Club and today's video is very, very slow. Well, it's almost real time because this just came together so, so fast. So, um, yeah, and yet I felt like I wanted to chat. So I'm not going to deprive myself that pleasure just because I made a really fast layout. So let me just tell you a little bit about the layout and then we can move on to talk about other fun things. So uh, my themes for today were to use, this is Mixed Media Monday, so I had to use the color kit and some stitching and cut files. So unfortunately, I never learned my lesson and the lesson here is whenever you're using mixed media on your background, always take your mists and stitching and whatever you're doing a bit further than you think you're going to need them. Because by the time I'm done here, adding all my photos and everything, very little is going to show behind them. So I'm not even sure that the stitching shows. But anyway, I really love this idea. And I have also a theme for my next post on Sunday the 22nd and I already have an idea on how to do some stitching with that so um, so yeah the stitching I love that idea it was kind of my inspiration was to make something for that peacock to kind of um, stand on if you want and I should have just made the stitches go further uh, to the edges of the paper, um, but I didn't. So there. Uh, the Peacock is a wonderful, beautiful cut file from Paige Evans. It's on the HipKit Club website. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I cut it from cardstock and then I backed it with one of the papers from the kits. These are, these are the June kits. And um, what I want to say about it. Yeah, it has absolutely no connection to my photos. These are cute photos of Lily, as you can see, being super cute as she is. And I just thought the cut file was really pretty. So, you know, I, I want to scrap peacocks. I do. But I don't have any laying around the house and I do have a cute baby. So, yep, that's what I'm going to do. And I like the way it looks and yeah, it's super random, but who cares, right? It's my album. So yeah, today I thought I would tell you a little bit about my travels. So first of all, I want to again say thank you to all the people that comment and tell me things about alcohol and drinking <laughs> in their countries. <laughs> this video is going to be a lot more educational so your children can hear me also telling them about the world that I have seen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really, really appreciate your comments. It's um, fun to read. I really love learning about other places and other cultures. And that brings me, what a smooth, a smooth transition to my topic of the day. Now, I was born, I think, with Wanderlust. And I just, I mean, traveling for me, it's like one of these things I need for my soul. There's traveling, there's reading, there's art, like being creative, and then there's some TV watching. <laughs> and, you know, besides the health and family and all those things that are obviously the most important, I, I am a happy, my soul is happy and content if I can have those things in my life. And one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm extremely blessed and very grateful to have my family and everything, but um, I am really looking forward to having to, that the girls are a little bit more grown up so that we can go back and travel a bit more because I think once I could travel and definitely once I could travel by myself that's all I wanted to do like the goal of you know studying was to get to the summer or to get to a vacation where I can go and travel and the goal of working was to make money 
<laughs> so that besides buying myself food, I can book a plane ticket to somewhere. So I'll tell you a little bit about my best trips and I hope you will tell me about yours. So first I'll start with my first trip ever, the first time I flew. So a little bit of background. Wow, I'm so not consistent here. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, just leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer. So I grew up in Israel, as I've said many times, and Israel, if you're not familiar, so it's a tiny, tiny, tiny country in the Middle East, and it's surrounded by enemies or countries that were enemies. <laughs> so basically, you know, you can go visit Jordan, you can go visit Egypt, but other than that, if you want to go to any other country, you have to, you know, get on a plane. And uh, I know for, I'm guessing like a lot of few people in the US, that's quite similar. If you want to go to another country, you have to get on a plane. But um, yeah, in Europe, it's really not like that because Europe, sure, it's a continent, but it's a very small continent and I can drive from my home. I can drive like 45 minutes and I'm in Slovenia. And then like in a couple of hours or a few hours, I can get to Hungary, Italy, the Czech Republic, um, Slovakia, the, you know, Germany, and then a bit further, we have like France and just everywhere. So just a few hours, go in your car, you have to show your passport. But other than that, it's kind of you can drive whenever, wherever you want in Europe. And it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's for someone like me that comes from a place like Israel, that's like amazing that you can, you know, cross borders and, you know, borders is like something like fun and not something scary and dangerous. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, so um, my first uh, trip was when I was eight. It was uh, my brother's bar, bar, bar mitzvah uh, trip. So my parents took both of us to the US for a month. And I don't know, back then, you know, such a trip was, I mean, it, it's still like a, a really big deal to, you know, fly with your whole family to a different continent and everything. But during my childhood, we only had like two trips my whole childhood, like big trips that we flew abroad. And now I kind of feel like, you know, most of the families that I know in Israel, they fly every year to a vacation abroad somewhere. So yeah, I, I don't know if it, it was like times have changed or whatever. But anyway, it was like a huge deal. My parents really worked at it and kind of made the a trip of a lifetime. We went to Disneyland and, you know, we were in Vegas and New York. And it was for someone that comes from a small country and a small town. It, it was just unbelievable to me to see these things. But I was really young, so you know, I kind of went where they told me and I, I was completely wowed. Um, but then as I got older, also flying, I don't know, it just became kind of more easy or more accessible. I, I don't know. You know, my parents and grandparents, they grew up in communist countries and in communist countries, you could, just couldn't leave the country. They just didn't allow it. One time my grandfather had like a work trip or something and he wanted to take um, my grandma and my mom with him and they just didn't allow them. It, you know, they thought they would defect or something and th that's just it. You, you couldn't, you couldn't go. And so I think that's how they, I don't think that's how they grew up. And then once they came to Israel and they were in a free country, they traveled all the time. So my grandparents, like both grandparents from either sides, they would, um, you know, travel. My paternal grandparents, they really traveled the world. Um, they went to like South America and um, of course Europe. Europe was like the standard, like every year you go to Europe. And yeah, so I think also I got it from them that they had 
like real wanderlust and finally to have to be free to do all those things, all kinds of things that, you know, I can't even imagine. But anyway, it became more popular. And then I got obsessed with London. Um, London is my favorite city in the world. You know, people say the world is divided to Paris people, London people. Paris is beautiful, but London, 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 every time London, I am a firm believer, firm believer in, you know, if you get tired of London, you're tired of life. Uh, I've been more than a dozen times. I could go all the time. Last time I went, I think was in 2014 or something. I have already that itch, that London itch. I can't wait to go there again. It's the most amazing city. There are a lot of like really great cities, but London has that combination of, first of all, everything is in English, British, <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just, it has everything, you know, the, the theater, the culture, the um, art, the architecture. It's, it's like, I always say London is my favorite city and then Italy is probably my favorite country but to travel yeah so I was going to London 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 all the time London and then my when I was 18 I went with one of my best friends to we went we did a week in London then we stayed for a few days in Paris while my grandparents were also staying there because we had a family there and they had an apartment and so, of course, we used that because when you're young and you don't have a lot of money, you do what you have to do <laughs> to travel cheap. And then we went from Paris to Toulouse, which is a beautiful city in uh, France. Uh, again, we stayed with family, my this time my best friend's family. And Toulouse is, I remember it for two amazing things. So first of all, the old city in Toulouse, uh, I'm sure the French people say that word so much nicer that I can, um, you know, like they say Paris or Toulouse, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Toulouse is um, famous for its pink stone. So the old city is built in this gorgeous pink stone. And I mean, come on, I love pink. So <laughs> that place is for me, I should just move to the pink place. And another um, great memory that I have there is I ate there one of the best ice cream I've ice creams I've ever had in my life. So this was about 20 years ago. And there's really no comparison to what we had then in Israel compared to what um, there is now in Israel. You know, I grew up, we didn't have like McDonald's. We didn't, there was just, everything was very local, very simple, you know, think, small town, small country, nothing was as multi-culti international as it is now. And, you know, our culinary adventures were there was like a Chinese restaurant in my neighborhood, which I have no idea how that type of restaurant got there. But that was that, you know, like that 80s Chinese red radioactive sweet and sour sauce. Um, we had like regular pizza. We didn't have like anything like Domino's Pizza or Pizza Hut. I remember when all these things came to Israel. I think I was like a teen when we started having these things. Um, so in Toulouse, I ate this dark chocolate ice cream that was to die for. And, you know, we just had like those industrial ice cream tubs that you get in the supermarket, like, or even on the street. But they didn't have like any of the boutique like quality stuff or like Italian ice cream. It's just it didn't have that. And I remember like sitting in, you know, a coffee place in a per in Parisian, a French town square eating this amazing dark chocolate ice cream that came in like this fancy cup. I, you know, that memory stuck with me, obviously. So that was our before the army trip. And another thing I want to say about Israelis. So because we're such in such a small country and, you know, we can't just go in a car and drive. I mean, I see the people here in Austria, 
you know, the young people, they get in, a, they go on their summer vacation, they go to Croatia, they go to Italy, like all these things. We didn't have that in Israel. You have to get on a plane to get somewhere. And then also when you're 18, you go to the army. And in the army, you are not allowed to leave the country. You're bas- basically the property of the state and only under very, you know, special circumstances, like, I don't know, your brother is getting married abroad, then maybe you'll be allowed to go, but, but you can't. And for men, I think especially serving, you know, for three years, women serve two years. So if you serve three years or more, if you're an officer, and by the time you're done, you know, you're 21, you're 22, you want to see the world, you want to just breathe, feel free after three or four years in the army. So everyone pretty much (laughs) travels somewhere. And with the Israelis, with the young ones, it's, I think especially they do like backpacking trips. So they go for months and months to either the Far East or South America because those places tend to be, you know, cheaper in Europe. It would be like a bit harder to, um, to stay for months and months. And yeah, so that thing is like very typical. And I think people also think for that reason, because there's like Israelis everywhere. I think people think that we are a, a lot more people than we actually are (laughs) but we just you know everyone almost every everyone that i know like travels and you know went to many places and for longer periods of time so it's like a thing and um yeah so my trip i didn't have like a stressful army service my army service was really really great very calm Uh, I talked about this before. I was a teacher. I taught English and chemistry and I lived at home and I worked in the afternoons and the evenings and I had like my students and I helped them. So it was just fun, not very stressful. But of course, I wanted to travel. So when I finished the army, I went on two trips. So one was, I think, for me, the best thing about traveling is that you you see other places, you see other cultures and you learn about yourself and how you deal with situations and it's just the best thing it's it's just amazing but also when you're traveling for a long time it also becomes like almost like a job and you know it really depends on the country some countries are very um, friendly to visitors and then with other countries you know you have a lot of stuff you have to deal with where people try to take advantage of you because you're a tourist and you're not familiar with things or they think because you come from um, I don't know Europe or something you have a lot of money and um, yeah people try to take advantage try to te- to cheat you so sometimes it can be exhausting but and you always have to be careful you know i was they tried to pickpocket me i think in new york and like when i traveled like when i was backpacking in the far east i'll get to that in a sec um you know you have to like tie your bags to the train with like a cable if you want your bag to be there when you wake up from your nap (laughs) so I won't have time to talk about my, um, actually my biggest and most interesting trips, but good that we have another video coming next week. So I promise to uh, continue the stories. So my after army trips, I went with my brother to Thailand for a couple of weeks and this was an interesting trip. I mean, first of all, I've never traveled alone with my brother. So that was uh, fun and interesting. And, you know, we are, we're quite similar Um, so yeah, we got along very well. I had these, um, ideas that I was going to, he had to go back, but I thought I was going to stay, you know, like maybe meet up some people and continue to travel with them. But that wasn't me. Like at that point, I wasn't that open to the world and just, you know, joining some strangers and traveling somewhere. So that didn't happen. (laughs) And I returned home (laughs) to the relief and joy of my parents together with him. But that was my first trip to somewhere like really different. Um, And Thailand, you know, compared to like other places in the Far East, it's quite westernized, I guess. And um, yeah, there are also all kinds of like disturbing phenomenons there which I want to keep this 
kid friendly this video so I won't go into that but that was interesting and then at the end of that year before I went to university I went for two months with my best friends to with my best friend to the US which I've spoken about in a, another video and yeah this video is coming to an end what I really wanted to talk to you about was my trip to China and Tibet and then also to New Zealand but I guess we'll just have to do that in a next week's video so this is my finished layout I had a lot of fun making it I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a wonderful week bye